I'm adding this one minute segment to the very front in case it's hard to understand what I was trying to accomplish in this experiment. From the last video, this is the rocket stove configuration that didn't work because the idea was to use this as a hopper and to be able to open the top and add wood and then close it back up. But that's explained in the last video. So I had the configuration all set up. I loaded this with wood and want to use this as the chimney in this experiment. So the first part of the experiment was to block up the top of the riser, the hole with the mineral wool here, and allow the air to get in here. Air will come in under the grate. There's a grate. Uh, the sticks sit up on a metal grate, and then it'll burn up this way. Then the idea is to plug this hole up, open this. The air will then rush down the riser to see if there's any difference in the draft. Hey guys, it's Stove Talk with Matt. This is the rocket stove that didn't work uh, from the last video, but since I have the configuration all ready to go, I figured I'd try an experiment before I break it down. I filled the hopper here with sticks. We're going to use this as the chimney though. I'm not going to cover this up. And the experiment is we're going to add air initially from the side here underneath the grate and then I'm going to plug that hole and I'm going to, remember I had the reverse flow last time, down the riser and it was kind of like a reverse rockety effect. I'm going to unplug this and I'm going to let the air come down here and I'm going to see if there's a difference in the draft between uh, you know A on the left and B on the right. Okay, uh, this air hole is open. Again, this one's plugged up. Just got it started. We'll give this a couple minutes, then I'll switch it up and we'll see if we have a, a difference. That's going pretty good. I don't see how it could go any better. Doesn't get much better than that. So I'll plug it and see what happens. I don't notice any difference. I really don't. It's completely plugged up. That's open. It's getting, you know, the same amount of air. It's... Well... I don't know. Maybe it'll increase. It's definitely not worse. You know, the air is coming all the way down here across the bottom, being injected up under the grate. I don't see a whole lot of difference. Let's see. No, it didn't change anything. I actually thought the longer run on the draft coming down the riser would actually be a little bit more uh, intense, but it wasn't. But we could almost turn this into an outside airline conversation. We'll do a whole video on outside airlines at some time. I have a 30-foot outside airline on my stove. It comes from underneath. It comes from the basement. But um, people, are, you know, under the impression that, oh, the outside airline, you know, just a few feet through the wall, it works great. I mean, I've, I've lit the stove with that outside airline many, many times. You have to be very careful and make sure the draft is moving in the right direction. I guess there's a slight risk of, of back draft, and that's a disaster. But once you get everything flowing in the right direction, um, which for me, it's just, it's instant, 30-foot um, outside airline... I can absolutely notice the difference with the stove taking the cold air from outside versus stealing the warm air from inside the house. So here, it's, it's, I mean, it's kind of like an outside airline. It's coming down four feet, across two feet, and in, instead of directly underneath. And, um, you know, again, that's, uh, mine's 30 feet long, and it's, it's, I'm absolutely thrilled that I rigged up the outside airline. I figured it would work and it doesn't take away the performance of the stove at all. So to summarize the last three videos, in terms of what I was trying to do, it was a failure. These rocket stoves worked. I don't want to you know, be unclear about that, but not in terms of what I was trying to do. Trying to be able to open the top up like a Sador stove and add wood while it's burning. That's what didn't work. 
as soon as I open the top up on any of these configurations, and this is the first configuration from the original video, I guess three back, where the riser is right on the back of the burn chamber or the hopper. There's no, there's no uh, run, horizontal run of a foot and a half, uh, which some call the burn chamber. This is from the original video, three back. Every time I open the top up, the sticks were very, were smoking. They wanted to ignite, but you, if you don't know the other two videos, guys, you see, you see that two brick opening, one half brick by two brick opening where the burn chamber enters the uh, riser of the, the rocket stove. This is not the final stove, of course. This is, it's half broken down. That riser goes up two feet. Uh, I'm just breaking it down and, and showing you midway through the construction here what it looks like so you can see the internals. This is not the final stove, of course. Somebody's like, that riser's too small. Well, I, yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's being broken down or taken apart. Um, but you can't see the, 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 air, the air, just like I showed in this video, is at the bottom and, uh, of course, um, unplugged. And the air just comes across the bottom just nine inches, one brick, and then goes up the riser. And even with one little channel across the bottom, the sticks in this hopper here still wanted to smoke and smolder. And then I told you, as soon as I, one time when I took the top off, it all flashed. It all, it all the fire, it, the, everything caught on fire at once because it was given the oxygen it needed, and, it, and it's not going to work. However, this configuration is a great rocket stove if you want to cook or something like that. But it's pretty much pointless for heat because you, the barrel is key. Putting the the oil barrel, the half barrel, over the riser, you can't, you can't do it here because the riser is too close to the burn chamber. That the riser has to be you know, 10 more inches away or so, so you can put your barrel over top. It just doesn't work. So that's, that's kind of the problem. Most, my stoves are, you know, I'm all about heat, heat, not about cooking. So, um, but still, I mean, you just, like in the last video, you extend the rise, you know, you, you put a burn chamber in, horizontal, extend the riser out, and then you can put a barrel over top. And as long as you don't try to, you know, the idea is here, you don't take the top off. That was a failed experiment. But if everything is sealed up and you, you add a little door from the side, and then it would be a great little rocket stove. In fact, you know, this is, I'll just close with this. My, my pet peeve, guys, is how complicated some of these videos uh, seem to make it for somebody that's new at this. I mean, this is all you need. You, you know, you can just add some bricks, and if you want to push that riser out, far enough away to make so you can put your barrel over top all you have to do is stack bricks and cut a few halves with a cheap wet saw harbor freight as the tile wet saw for 45 dollars it cuts fire brick no problem fire brick is very soft but people that don't know what they're doing watch these youtube videos and they say oh i can't do it myself someone will construct these batch boxes right oh you have to all these angle cuts all this you have to have a v at the bottom of your burn chamber and all these angle cut no you don't no, it doesn't do anything. It's one percent increase, and oh, the riser. Oh, you have to have these little V's, these little angles at the the riser. So uh, no, you don't. You have to oh, you have to create a vortex. It has to s swirl around. No, it doesn't. This just I get. You can stack bricks literally in four minutes and make this, and um, it just it works. It works. Work. There's no smoke. It works. It works fine. Um, what else do they do in the batch box configuration? It's just, oh, the, the percentage, and people will even come to this channel and they'll say, Matt, it's, it's a, a one to two to four, or what, it doesn't, that does, blah, who, you don't need those, those ratios, come on, man, it's not, all you got to do is stack bricks like this, if I was literally making a rocket stove for my home here, I would simply, I wouldn't cut it so close on let the flames getting into, uh, into the riser. I only have, it's only a half brick by two bricks. There are fire bricks are nine by 4.5 by 2.5. I wouldn't, you know, this is like a, a, a batch box port, but it's tiny. I was like, oh, you got to have your port exactly at a certain inches. Bull crap. I, if I was doing this for my home, I wouldn't be so, I wouldn't cut it so close. I would be one half brick by three high just to let the flames come into the riser a little bit more easily to avoid any sort of backup. I was trying to accomplish something here. That's why the entrance to the riser was very, very small. Again, in this experiment, it was one half brick, fire brick, by two high. If I was doing this in my home, I would simply go three high. 
Matt, don't you, doesn't your port have to be exactly this many inches? In the, no. Um, don't you need to put little angles in the riser so you get the vortex? No. It all, it all works just fine. And, um, you know, people, it's just it's a shame. People watch these videos like, I can't, I can't do all that. What else do they? Oh, the secondary air. It's pretty simple. If, within five seconds, this configuration, this rocket stove had no smoke. You know, what, you know what secondary air would do for me when I have no smoke? Nothing. No smoke means you're getting, you know, 95% combustion. I mean, oh, maybe some secondary air would, would make it, oh, I'd get an extra 2% or something. It, does, it doesn't matter. You don't need the secondary air if you have no smoke. It's literally that simple. Don't need no P-channel. Don't need not, not all these rocket stove tinkers. Drives me nuts. Thanks for watching.